Welcome into my bracket picks for March Madness 2024 presented by BetUS. Now, this is like the fifth time I've started recording on this. Hopefully, this will be the one that you end up seeing. We're going to one take this thing. I'm going to go through my bracket picks. And let me just say, I don't know what the selection committee did going into this weekend, but it must have involved a lot of drinking because this bracket is random. Oh, my goodness. You got a lot of regions that are extremely strong and a lot of regions that are extremely weak. And it makes it much harder to pick the bracket. Um, going into my first recording in this video, I recorded it all. And I had no idea what my picks were going to be. And, and let me just say, they were wild. They were wild. Unfortunately, I used the wrong microphone. Um, so now we're going to just try and one take this. And I'm going to give you my picks and my thoughts on some of these teams. Um, now, I, I do have a decent track record. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be humble about this, but I do have a, a decent track record. I've made uh, bracket picks for years now on YouTube, and you can go back and watch some of those videos. I've picked three seeds in the championship game correctly. I've picked four seeds in the championship game correctly, including UConn last year, who I almost decided to have winning it all, winning it all before I picked Brandon Miller and Alabama. That didn't really pan out, but I still won my bracket pool because it was a bunch of craziness in March Madness last year. Um, and I ended up having UConn in the championship. So uh, I got points for that and, uh, UConn ended up really panning out for me. Um, I, I do have a decent track record and I think part of that is because I watch a ton of college basketball. I do a lot of scouting for NBA prospects as I run a NBA channel. I always like knowing every player that gets drafted and having opinions on them. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, shout out to you. I know a lot of people watching this video though, uh, probably maybe either only watch me once a year just for these bracket picks or have never watched this video before so uh shout out to you if you're new you can subscribe if you want to i do bracket picks every single year and talk a lot about the nba draft and scouting and that sort of stuff if you're into it um but yeah i also do bracketology as well so i have opinions on where a lot of these teams are seated because i think the selection committee uh, this bracket is random they hate the mountain west except for san diego state apparently and some of these seedings are very, very questionable, more questionable than in previous years, but it allows me to pick my bracket based on what seeds I think are, are questionable and so forth. So um, one more thing to take care of before we get into my bracket picks, and that is our sponsor for this video, which is BetUS. America's favorite sports book is BetUS. Featuring live betting and race book, they're celebrating their 30th year anniversary with a historic offer. A 125% sign up bonus on your first three deposits, plus 10% gambler's insurance. You can get started today by using my sign up link in the description box below and promo code JOIN125 to activate those first three deposit bonuses. Now, uh, unfortunately, as I look at things on, on BetUS, their spread lines are not live for the first round of March Madness games. However, they should be live here shortly, and you can use this video if you want to. I'm not liable if you if you struggle with your picks, okay? My picks might be completely terrible this year. I'm not sure. Can't get it right every year. But um, you can use this video if you want to to make some BetUS picks, and you get a 125 bonus on your first three deposits, which is a great offer, and you can get in on spread lines for some of these games. I'll talk about whether I think games are going to be close or blowouts, um, and you can base uh, your picks on spread lines for these games off of that honestly if i was picking spreads on games like the past few years i'd probably would have made a lot of money given how some of some things panned out um so shout out to bet us for sponsoring this video make sure you get in on that the link to sign up is in the description promo code join 125 for 125 percent bonus on your first three deposits now let's oh no there's one more thing if you want to join my 20 dollar bracket pool i forgot about that if you want to join my $20 bracket pool, let me know down in the comment section below. And if you're in my $20 bracket pool, I ask that you refrain from watching this video because I don't want you copying my picks. And if you're going to watch this video, just make your own picks, okay? If you just blatantly copy my picks and are in my $20 bracket pool, then we're going to have to have a conversation. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, not to not to threaten you or anything, but um, yeah, just... Uh, you know, do, do not try and cheat the system by copying my picks and only changing one or something like that. That's what I'm always worried about doing videos like these when I, uh, uh, these picks are going to be in a paid bracket pool. But I will say this, I will probably drop another video Wednesday night uh, talking about changes I've made to my picks because this bracket is extremely hard to pick. Maybe the hardest bracket I've ever had to pick. 
So some of these picks are going to change, but I'm going to talk about which teams I like, which teams I don't like, which teams I think are underseeded, which teams I think are overseeded, and you can produce your own bracket based on some of that if you want to. Or you can just disagree with everything I say and say my picks suck, and that's completely cool too. Anyway, let's jump into this thing. We're going to pick all one seeds. I know a 16 seed beat Purdue last year, but, uh, I, you know, it's very rare. They're 2 in 150 or something like that. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to pick all ones. Although, I do think if a one seed loses in, to a 16 seed, I actually wouldn't pick Purdue. I'd pick North Carolina. I don't have a lot of trust in North Carolina, but this region is weak. This region is extremely strong. And uh, this region is pretty weak. And this region is decent. That's how I view the bracket. Um, and... The committee hates the Mountain West. We'll talk about those teams once we get there, but we're picking all one seats. Now, let's go down here. FAU Northwestern. I don't trust FAU. I feel like everybody's going to pick FAU because of what they did last year, but they should have been a 10 seed. I also think Northwestern should have been a 10 seed. And this just comes down to, do you believe in the Big Ten or not? And a lot of times when I pick brackets, I like to um, pick which conferences I think are strong versus which, which conferences I think are weak. I don't know what to think of the Big Ten. I've picked a lot of Big Ten teams in the past, and I've been burnt by it, including Keegan Murray, Iowa. I really like that team, and pff, they choked. I think they lost in the first round. But I'm going to go Northwestern here. Uh, San Diego State, UAB. Uh, last year, San Diego State was a five, and I picked them to lose in the first round. This year, I'm not going to make that same mistake, but... Uh, I don't think they're as good as they were last year. And also, every Mountain West team got discounted except for them. Nevada's a 10. Most people had them as a 6 or a 7. Boise State is in the last four in. Pretty much nobody had that. Colorado State is in the last four in, which was a bit surprising. Um, basically, the committee hates the Mountain West, but if you did well last year, you get a higher seed. FAU, San Diego State. For some reason, apparently, it matters what you did last year because... If San Diego State didn't go on that run last year, I don't think they would have been a five seed. It's very confusing why San Diego State is the only Mountain West team that didn't get discounted. Auburn, phenomenal four seed. Should have been a three seed. Yale was maybe going to be my favorite 13, but I love Auburn. So this is rough. Like Yale, you can make an argument they are the best 13 seed. BYU versus Duquesne. I don't like Duquesne. I like a lot of 11 seeds, but I don't like Duquesne here. Thought they should have been a 12. BYU... Could have made an argument that they could have been a five, maybe even a four seed. Illinois, I love. I mean, UA, or Auburn's the best four. Illinois is the best three. Iowa State, you can make a case that they are the best two. Uh, they have the best resume. They just blew out Houston. And UConn's the best one. And then you got two other Final Four teams that aren't even included in that. Uh, so this region, as I said, extremely tough. Washington State versus Drake. Washington State has a lot of size. Drake has Tucker DeVries. Who's really good uh, as like a big point guard, but not super athletic. And I think Washington has the size to match up with him. Maybe better than any other team Drake could have faced. So I'm going to go Washington State there. And then we're going to go Iowa State as the two seed in that one. Nebraska versus Texas a and I'm going to go Nebraska. Nebraska uh, was impressive in the Big Ten tournament, even in their loss against Illinois. Texas a and um, is very hit or miss. Very hit or miss. Wisconsin, James Madison, I love James Madison as a 12 seed, but I also think Wisconsin is the best five. Um, like I said, I did like Big Ten teams. I am very tempted to go with, with James Madison there. I'll probably pick two, two 12 seeds. Um, I'm going to go Wisconsin. Uh, maybe this is a little foreshadowing, but I'm going to go Wisconsin there, and then I'm going to go Duke versus Vermont. I mean, this could be an upset. I think this game will be close. I haven't been impressed with Duke. I think Filipowski is a little bit overrated, to be honest with you. Um, the spread on this, I don't know what it's going to be, but if it's within, um, if it's not within single digits, I'd take Vermont's side of things. If Duke's favored by like 12 points, I'm taking Vermont in that. Um, same thing with Wisconsin, James Madison. James Madison's a good team. These games could be close. Auburn versus Yale, I would probably take Auburn's spread in that. Texas Tech versus NC State. NC State's just on a roll, has momentum. Tough to match up with, especially with uh, Burns, who's just a beast on the interior. Uh, I think they take care of Texas Tech. Then we got Kentucky. They got guard play. They got a lot of draft prospects. That team's going to be fun to watch. 
Florida, I think, is underseeded as a seven. You could have made an argument that they still deserve a five, despite losing the SEC championship to Auburn. And then Marquette over Western Kentucky. We're going to have to watch Tyler Kolek's status here. If he's not healthy, I might take Western Kentucky in this game. Um, but that's where I, I might make another video on Wednesday based on having new information on the injuries for Marquette. And then as well, Kansas, because Kansas has some guys that are banged up. Let's move on to this region. Utah State versus TCU. Utah State burned me last year. Burned me last year. I, I liked them a lot as a 10 seed. I think I had them in the Sweet 16. They didn't pan out. Well, the Mountain West redeemed themselves after they uh, were slept on by the selection committee. That's a storyline to watch. But I'm just going to go with TCU for now. Um, TCU versus Purdue could be a could be a really good matchup. Um, Gonzaga versus McNeese. Gonzaga probably deserved a 7. Mountain West got punished. The WCC got rewarded for some reason. I'm a huge Gonzaga fan, by the way. Favorite team. Love them. I actually really like this bracket and the way it shapes up for him but McNeese is a phenomenal 12 seed and I think their style gonna give Gonzaga, Gonzaga trouble um I'm gonna take McNeese here but I'm gonna be rooting for, for my Gonzaga Bulldogs Kansas for Samford Kansas is banged up haven't been playing well didn't finish uh too well in the big 12 Samford is a good 13 we're gonna put a 12 versus 13 matchup here in the round of two with McNeese and Samford, uh, this region could get hectic. Oregon, South Carolina, I'm going to go with Oregon. Just like with NC State, they're on a tear, won their conference tournament to get in. That's why you have first four games as 10 seeds because of teams like Oregon and NC State. So we're going to go with Oregon. And then Creighton versus Akron. Going to take Creighton here. Uh, you got Texas versus the winner of Virginia and Colorado State. And... If it's Texas versus Virginia, I'm taking Texas. But first four teams always tend to win a game, at least one of them, win a game in the round of 64. If Colorado State beats Virginia, I actually like Colorado State to then beat Texas. We'll have to wait and see, though, on that matchup. And then we got Tennessee beating St. Peter's. No Cinderella run for them this time. Go over here. I think both Mississippi State and Michigan State are overseeded, but I'm just going to go with Tom Izzo there in that one. Picking three nine seeds. Um, we got St. Mary's Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon is impressive. And St. Mary's always seems to disappoint, and they always seem to be five seeds. St. Mary's always seems to be a five, and then never pans out, although I think this might be the year that they could go on a run because I'm not super, super impressed with Alabama or North Carolina. Um, we're going to have Alabama beating Charleston. Clemson, New Mexico. I love New Mexico in this matchup. Baylor, Colgate. I have not picked a 14. Maybe I just won't pick a 14 this year. I always like to pick a 14, but maybe I just pick all threes. Dayton versus Nevada. Nevada is underseeded as a 10 seed. Um, I mean, this just comes down to, is this, does the Mountain West pan out or not? I'm going to take Nevada over Dayton. Um, just got to slow down Deron Holmes and you can beat Dayton. They haven't looked too good over the second half of the season. And then Arizona versus Long Beach State. I don't trust Arizona at all. I think they lose to a 15 once again, especially with Long Beach State firing their coach and then letting them still coach. And then they win a conference championship. I mean, that's extra motivation, I guess. Um, and this is a battle of two Gonzaga coaching legends too, which is kind of cool. But uh, Long Beach State, I like beating Arizona. And that makes an interesting makes for an interesting second round matchup with them in Nevada. Um, let's go up here: UConn over Northwestern, Auburn over San Diego State, Illinois, Iowa State. I mean, these top four teams are absurd. Uh, so I'm just gonna go with chalk there. Houston, we got Brandon, Nebraska. I'm gonna go with Wisconsin over Duke. Um, Wisconsin looked good in their conference tournament. Duke lost to NC State, and. Store for Wisconsin is a really fun player. I mean, they're going to live or die by him. If he's if he stays hot, he has some really good games in the Big Ten Conference Tournament. If he stays hot, this team could be very dangerous and maybe a sleeper for the Final Four. Um, but I like him carrying him through the first couple of games into this matchup with Houston. Kentucky versus NC State. I think Kentucky takes care of NC State. Florida versus Marquette. I'm going to go with Florida there. Um, Got to see what happens with Tyler Kolek. If he's healthy... Might take Marquette, but I took Marquette as a two seed to make the final four last year, and that burned me. So I'm going to go with Florida, who I think you could have made a case for them being a, a five seed. That team's underrated. Purdue, TCU. 
we're going to put Purdue as the winner there. McNeese versus Stanford. Going to put McNeese. Creighton versus Oregon. I'm tempted to go with Oregon. But we're just going to roll with Creighton and Tennessee. And then this next bracket going to be insane. I mean, you got Grand Canyon versus Alabama. North Carolina, I do not trust. <laughs> Michigan State could be a sleeper as a nine seed because Michigan State always gets in as like a seven, eight, nine seed and then goes on some massive run that nobody expects and then makes it to the final four. And this region is weak. I don't trust North Carolina, but I mean, I got to go with them, I guess. Grand Canyon over Alabama. I, I like Grand Canyon as a sleeper team. Grant Foster, really impressive for them. I mean, they just look like a, a um, power conference team. Every time there is a uh, mid-major... 12 seed, 13 seed, that when I watch them, they jump off the pages. Uh, team with size and skill and athleticism and look like a power conference team. I like them as a sleeper. I'm going to take New Mexico over Baylor. I don't trust Baylor um, whatsoever. And I think New Mexico is uh, a sleeper team for sure. Uh, and then Nevada versus Long Beach State. I'm going to go with Nevada here. We got a 1, 10, 11, and a 12 there. Um, I think the one thing maybe that I'm being giving too much credit is winning conference championships with like New Mexico here, but I don't like Clemson. I don't like Baylor. I don't like Colgate. You know, if this was Kentucky here, I'd probably take Kentucky. So I think, um, you know, it shapes up well for New Mexico in this region. I don't like Arizona. I don't like Dayton all that much. So interesting bracket there. We got UConn versus Auburn. Here's where things get interesting. Everybody's going to pick UConn. How many teams repeat though? I feel like a lot of defending champs end up getting upset before the final four in this conference or this, this region is extremely tough for UConn. Pretty much everybody's going to pick UConn. Auburn is the best four seed. Broom could get Klingon in foul trouble. Get him off the floor. Their defense is worse. I mean, UConn's guards can be a little hectic. Auburn plays at a really fast pace. I'm going to take Auburn in the upset here. Because I think if there's any four seed that could beat UConn in a Sweet 16, it's Auburn. Should have been a three. And this is the type of pick where if you get this right, you win your bracket pool. Playing it safe makes it hard to win your bracket pool. Because a lot of people like to play it safe. You got to be willing to be bold in order to win bracket pools. Unless you only got like eight people in there. But then what are you really playing for? So I like Auburn in this game. And then Illinois, Iowa State. I'm going to go Illinois. We got Illinois, Auburn, Battle of Orange, and uh, Navy in the Elite Eight there. Houston, I'm going to take over Wisconsin. Then got Kentucky and Florida. I think Kentucky ends up winning this game. Their guard play is better than Florida's. Both these teams rely heavily on guard play, but I like Kentucky there. We're going to go down here. Purdue over McNeese, and then Tennessee over Creighton. So we got, what, a 4-3, a 1-3, a 1-2, and then whatever this ends up being. Um, we're going to take North Carolina here, and we're going to take New Mexico, actually, to make an Elite Eight run. Which is, is bold, but as I said, upset heavy bracket, given that my bracket pool rewards upsets. Um, we're going to take Illinois here. We're going to take Houston. We're going to take Tennessee, and we're going to take North Carolina. So we got two ones, a two, and a three. I'm going to put Illinois in the championship game, and I'm going to put Houston. Illinois has Terrence Shannon, star power, has, has played phenomenally for them um like i said maybe i'm giving a little too much credit to them for winning their conference tournament but i mean they're playing good basketball at the right time they got coleman hawkins who's uh an intriguing player uh i like illinois i got illinois houston i'm gonna go with houston winning it all i think that loss to iowa state could be a great thing to help them refocus they tend to go on deep runs i also like their region if uconn was in this region i'd probably go with uconn winning it all but UConn is in such a tough reason, region. I don't really trust them making it out of here. Houston, I have more faith in them being able to make it out of here. Uh, and they were playing dominant basketball before that Iowa State game. So they can defend. They can score. I think this is the year that Houston finally gets it done. They've been knocking on the doorstep for a little bit now. But yeah, those are my bracket picks. Tough, tough bracket to pick. I'll probably have another video on Wednesday after I put more thoughts, look at more analytics and all sorts of nerdy stuff that 
I do before I um, finalize my bracket. But these are just my initial thoughts, my initial bracket. I do always try and have um, no more than two one seeds in the final four. So um, I like Tennessee with Dalton Connect. If, if you can slow down Connect, you can beat Tennessee. But I like their path here through Creighton um texas colorado state like i i just i don't trust really any team in this bracket other than tennessee purdue wouldn't be a bad pick there like this could be a redemption year where they go on and win it all i actually wouldn't hate that you know maybe kentucky and purdue here could make some sense um in the final four and then picking purdue to win it all but it's tough because a lot of teams i like are paired up with each other so it's more so like which path do i have the most faith in which whose path do i think is the weakest i think houston's path is noticeably weaker than yukon's so i'm gonna go with houston making it all and see if i can win a bracket pool by uh picking yukon to get upset because i do think auburn can beat them and if auburn doesn't beat them i do think illinois can beat them too and even iowa state don't sleep on iowa state um, so those are my bracket picks. Once again, if you want to bet spreads on these games, make sure to check out BetUS in the description box below. My sign-up link helps out the channel, and then promo code JOIN125 gives you three 125% deposit matches on your first three deposits, which means if you deposit $100, you get $125 on top of that. It's a minimum $100 deposit for that, up to $2,500, and you can get in on some spread lines for March Madness games which could be a lot of fun as well. And if your bracket gets busted early, you can always have some fun in following rounds by placing money on some spread lines with BetUS. Once again, if you want to join my $20 bracket pool, let me know down in the comment section below. And that wraps things up for this one. Stay tuned for potentially a video on Wednesday talking about changes I've made to my picks. Um, but if not, then good luck with your brackets and your pools and this year is going to be hectic i'm looking forward to it i appreciate you guys tuning in and watching and i'll catch you later until next time as always peace out go blazers